This is the Island Biogeography and Evolution Lab, solving phylogenetic puzzles using molecular genetics by R.P. Filson. And this lab is uh, great for advanced high school biology. It's a good how-to-do AP biology introductory lab for a class, and I use it to sort of teach the AP way. We think we found a mistake that R.P. Filson made which makes a part five to this lab even more interesting. Thank you, R.P. Filson, for doing an outstanding job in contributing to the way that high school students explore scientific process and uh, for really opening the door for us. Okay, let's get started with the lab analysis, the Filson Phylogeny Lab by R.P. Filson of Princeton University. The concept of island biogeography in biology is a fascinating one. And it basically has to do with the rate of colonization of islands. Islands that are very far from the mainland or islands that uh, are more recent in their geologic age, it's thought would uh, be less diverse. They would have less life on them. Islands that are close to the mainland, in particular older islands and islands that are much larger, would have a lot more diversity, a lot more opportunities for life to colonize them. So large islands close to mainland are going to be islands that we would expect to have a lot of animals and plants. Islands that are very small and far, far away from the mainland and more recent in their geologic history would have the least animal and plant species. So this island biogeographic comparison can also be used to study rates of evolution. It then can be inferred that islands that are closer to the mainland of Africa, for example, the Canary Islands, within the archipelago, those larger islands that are older and closer to the mainland would be the original sources of colonization for a particular group of lizards. Those lizards might get stranded on a raft of kelp while foraging near the shore and drift out to sea. Eventually one of those lizard kelp bed moments is going to land on an island and that island will be colonized. The distance from the mainland and mainland continent is also very important and so a large island that is close to the mainland will have a lot of diversity whereas an island that is far from the mainland uh, will have less diversity. It makes sense then also that islands would be colonized more quickly when they're closer to the mainland. And this is the case with the Galosha lizards. Over time, islands that are closer to the mainland are going to receive more colonization events, and islands that are further from the mainland would receive more sporadic colonization events. So let's look through the lens of island biogeography first from distance to mainland. That's going to be our first focus here. So now I'm going to just take my ruler here and I'm going to start measuring, assuming that we're coming from the mainland of Africa, we've already got to Fort Aventura. It really makes sense just to measure from Fort Aventura out to each island. So here I have my first measurement and I've got about, what is that, 28 millimeters? And now I'm going to measure from Fort Aventura to the next island, and that's going to give me South Tenerife. And it looks like I'm right around 70 millimeters. Let's try North Tenerife, about the same. So from Fort Aventura to Tenerife is about 70 millimeters. So that's even further from the mainland. And now I'm going to measure out, look how Tenerife kind of gets in the way of things. That's making things really interesting for what probably really happened. Let's go from uh, Fort Aventura out to La Palma. And, you know, that's, that's about 120, 128 millimeters, 127 millimeters. So look at how the data is growing. I'm getting further and further away from the mainland and using this Fort Aventura as a reference point. All right, now passing through Tenerife, which is kind of problematic, but it looks like I'm 100 millimeters on my map uh, through Tenerife out to Gomera. So that would imply that Gomera is more recent of an event than Palma. And now we're going to go from Fort Aventura out to Hero, and it's 115 millimeters. Okay, so we've established that the shortest distance from the mainland of Africa is to Fort Aventura. And then the next distance is out to Gran Canaria. And from Gran Canaria, we know the next distance is to Tenerife. And then from there, we know the next distance is Gomera. But you see, to get to Gomera, you're gonna either have to curl under or, or go through Tenerife. 
And then uh, you've got Palma and Hero as well. So it seems to make sense that the lizards would have drifted on kelp beds from the mainland out this way, and after many being lost at sea, eventually get a population here. And then those lizards are going to traverse the island, eventually find themselves on a kelp bed, and after many being lost at sea, they're going to find some arriving here. And then after that, a uh, few leap off, many lost at sea, but eventually someone's going to arrive here. They will colonize. And here's where it gets sketchy. Did they do this? Or is it possible they did this? Or is it possible they did this and this? So we have three options. I kind of like this, going from here out to Palma and out to Hero. Gall. But it really makes sense that they could have actually gone out to Palma and then down to Gomera and over. It also makes sense that they could have gone to Palma and Gomera and then to Hero. It's even possible they could have gone to all three of them independently. So we have about four options out here, and we're going to have to use more methods to figure out what that means. All right, so here's the mainland Africa. This is probably Morocco would be a good guess, right? Sahara region. And this lizard is extinct. It has been for quite some time. So from here, we're going to, um, and by the way, not all evolution uh, means that the ancestor is extinct. What you're going to see when we draw this is that a lot of what's happening here is resulting in species that are still doing just fine. And so when we have all of these nodes here kind of ending in the same place, it means that they're all still alive. So this is Galosha Stellini, and this occupies Lanzarote and Fuerteventura. And then the next one here is Galosha Atlantica, and that, according to our map, occupies Gran Canaria. Now, I have some trouble with this, and I'm going to explain why later, but for now, just play along, okay? It turns out R.P. Felsen may well have made a mistake. We're moving up here now, and we're going to have um, our Tenerife animal. And by the way, all of these are Galosha Galotai, at least at the time of publication, and Galosha Galotai would be another species, but these are all different populations that are living extant. So from here we have a common ancestor from Tenerife that went to uh, Hero and Gomera and La Palma. And these, this, is, this is just a hypothesis right now based on the evidence that I have. Okay, so if I look at my map again, what I'm effectively saying is that I believe the lizards came from the mainland and they went here, and then from here they went here, and from here they went to Tenerife, but from Tenerife there was a split, and one of the splits put them at La Palma, and the other split put them at, um, at Gomera and then Hero. And so you can see that Gomera-Hero split right here. So that's basically how to do a phylogenic tree. Now we're going to add more data. The data that I'm going to use now, parsimoniously, is was it possible for them to get there in the order they did? Were the islands there yet? Lanzarote and Fuerteventura are the oldest, so yes. Gran Canaria is the next oldest, so again, yes. There was an island there for them to reach after Fuerteventura. And then Tenerife is next. That still makes sense. La Palma is only 2 million years old. And so my branch still works, but I might want to I might want to switch it up a little bit. I might want to say let's let's turn this 
maybe La Palma's over here, and now Gomera and Hero are over here. So La Palma um, should have, oh, and, and look at this, Gomera is 5.3, and Hero is 0.8. So that still works to go from Gomera to Hero. La Palma may well have happened after Gomera. So lizards leave, and they get to Gomera, and then they end up, oh, it's possible, based on this, that now we see Gomera being split. So if I revise my phylogenetic tree, now I might need to take into consideration the fact that Gomera is old and both Palma and Hero are young. It's possible that lizards that had been colonizing Gomera for three million years now went to Palma and then Hero. Okay, so this took some doing, but here's my extinct mainland Africa species, and a common ancestor gives rise to Galotia stellini, and then some, some time, and then Galotia atlantica, some time, and then North Tenerife. And somewhere from North Tenerife, as that species is there and evolving into its current state, at some point it leaves and gets to Gomera, and that one is still there in its current state, but sometime from Gomera it leaves and gets to Palma, and then at some point it leaves and gets to Hero. And so what I have now is a phylogenetic tree that shows sort of a, a common ancestry of these two from Gomera, and Gomera having a common ancestry from current Tenerife, but along Tenerife's development. So this is... Um, now I'm going to consider this to be maybe my, my better model. And this is based off of geologic age. So I have geographic distance giving me one possibility. Geologic age now gives me more evidence, and I revise my hypothesis. So now my hypothesis remains pretty intact. It makes sense that this body shape here and this distance, this length of this giant lizard, is pretty similar to this one. So sure, that could give rise to that. And then this could give rise to that. But I'm still left with a little confusion. Did Tenerife go to Gomera? And then did Tenerife go to Palma? Or did Tenerife go to Palma and then Palma shrink down? This looks like island endemic dwarfism. And if that's true, it's possible that we're back to our original one with Tenerife going to Palma and then Tenerife going to Gomera and Hero, or maybe something new, Tenerife going to Palma, and then to Gomera, and then to Hero. So now I have these lizards here, and I have to revise my hypothesis again, and I actually feel pretty confident right now that Tenerife gave rise to this one out here on Palma, and then later, or actually first, went to Gomera, because Gomera is an older island. Palm is only 2 million years old. So this is what I think. I think we went from Tenerife to Palma, but first we had gone from Tenerife to Gomera and then to Hero. And I think the 5.3 million years on this little island gives us uh, some time to go through an island endemic dwarfism process. And that's more evidence from my background in biology, but I'm going to go with this. I think it's Lanzarote to Gran Canaria, to Tenerife, Tenerife to Gomera about four million years ago, and then to Hero less than a million years ago, and these two should be really similar. And also about two million years ago, Tenerife to Palma. So this is a different event than this. I'm going to draw that now on a phylogenetic tree, and let's see if it makes sense. All right, so I'm going to try to talk through this now. We have the extinct ancestor down here in Morocco. And its first island lineage then was Galotia stellini. And then from there we get out to Galotia atlantica. And now this, again, we've got this common root species, this same animal that has, is now modern Atlantica, at some point left Gran Canaria, and ended up going out to, um, here's another common ancestor, out to North Tenerife, or South Tenerife. So this is Galotia galotai on Tenerife. And then earlier in its evolution, we see a branch that results in modern Gomera, and somewhere along Gomera's evolution, a branch that results in Hero. 
Later in Galotia Galotes evolution of Tenerife, we see something that results in Palma. So this is about two million years ago, this is about four million years ago, and this is less than a million years ago. Nonetheless, I put them all on the same level here because they're all still extant. They're still alive. There's no extinction going on here. There are other species of lesser to the lizards on these islands, and some are also extinct or extremely endangered. But these are all currently living species, and this one was going through this process to today, while this happened and went to this process to today, while this happened and went through this process and this process and this process to today. And the Tenerife ancestor gave rise to what is now the Gomera, which gave rise to which is now the hero. And then later, the same Tenerife gave rise to the Palmera. So this is my third hypothesis, and this is based on distance, uh, age of the islands, and morphology, which is the form, shape, or measurements of an animal. So I'm pretty confident with this. But now we're going to bring in one more field, and that is molecular biology. And DNA is something that has been important in our recent understanding of evolution. And it turned out that DNA electrophoresis, or DNA fingerprinting, has only been around uh, since the late 1980s. So that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so this is the DNA from the cytochrome B gene, and we can use that, that gene um, to look at the similarities between two living things. The more closely related two living things are, the more similarities they have in DNA. Identical twins have the same DNA. So the more divergent two things are, the more geologic age has passed, the more reproductions have passed between them, the less related they are, the more differences you'll see in the DNA base pairs. DNA is a molecule made up of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, and those are called uh, nitrogenous bases and nitrogenous base pairs. And a nucleotide is when you take a phosphate and a deoxyribose sugar and bond those to a nitrogenous base. And so that phosphate, sugar, and nitrogenous base make a nucleotide, and those then stick together into a big macromolecule called DNA. Adenine bonds to thymine, and cytosine bonds to guanine. Adenine and guanine are purines, and thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines. So we're going to see the code made up of adenine, thymine, guanine, and uh, cytosine. Well, when we look at the code, I'm going to zoom in now. We look at the code, what we see for Stellini is the actual code. That is the molecular code as translated by fluorescent dye tagging and modern DNA analysis. What we have down below here, these dots mean same, 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 same. No difference. What this T means is that all of these lizards have a base pair change. Instead of cytosine, they now have thymine. What this means here is that cytosine has also been replaced with thymine. And what's interesting about this one is thymine has been replaced with cytosine in this lizard, this lizard, this lizard, and this lizard, but not this one. So Galosha Galotai of North Tenerife is more similar in this region to the ancestral Stellini. We can go on and check each one, and we can do it like this. We can compare one to two, and we compare one to two simply by counting the number of differences. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we keep doing that. When we're all done counting the differences between Stellini Atlantica, we can record that number. And then the next thing we're going to do is compare the number of differences between Atlantica and Galosha Galotai of Palma. And we can do that right here. We can go... Same, same, oh, there's one difference, same, 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 two differences, same, three differences. So we have three differences here, and then we're going to move on to the next one and keep going. There's four differences, five differences, six, seven, eight differences, nine, ten differences, that same, oh, look at that, though, that's 11 differences, same, same. And then we can move on to the same pairing 
here and we see same, 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 same. We keep doing that. There's another difference there and another difference there and another difference there. And we keep adding these differences up. Let's see, two and three. Here we go. Another difference is right there and there and there and there and there. And we add those up. Eventually, when we're done with all of this, we're going to make a chart. And the chart is going to compare all of the different lizards. So now you can compare any two lizards. Stellini Atlantica have 36 base pair differences. That's quite a lot. But Stellini and Palma have 41. So Stellini is further away from Palma than it is Atlantica. That actually makes sense because Galotia galotai's uh, populations are way out in the ocean, whereas Stellini and Atlantica are closer to the mainland. So we would expect that the further we get from home, the more differences because the more years have passed between Atlantica and these, these distant islands. Look at this, 49 base pairs between the island of Hero and the original population of Atlantica. Now we can keep on going and looking at other things as well. What you're going to see is some species, like look at this, four between Hero and I'm going to guess that's got to be Gomera, and it is. Those four differences really support our previous hypothesis that the animals from Gomera ended up on Hero. Six base pair differences here. That's South Tenerife. South Tenerife is really re close related to, oh, North Tenerife. So if, if you look at North Tenerife and South Tenerife, the island is actually separated by a mountain chain with a big volcano in the middle. So the lizards on the South Shore are experiencing a different ecosystem on the North Shore. And um, those mountain ranges are going to inhibit some of that migration. But eventually you get populations moving over and they start to experience diverging destinies. Eight base pair differences between North Tenerife and, ooh, Palma, that's exciting. This lends a lot of evidence to the fact that North Tenerife probably went to Palma, whereas South Tenerife went to Gomera. Uh, let's see, there's North Tenerife, uh, South Tenerife to Gomera. Let's try this. South Tenerife to North Tenerife. Hmm. Gomera to South Tenerife. 15. That's a low number. That's lower than any of these numbers. And then Gomera to Hero. So I, I like what that looks like. So we've done a lot of analysis here, but there is one uh, small problem. And that is if you look here, it says that this is Stellini and that this is Atlantica. But if you do your homework, you're going to find out that uh, that's not actually the case. So it turns out that the Grand Canaria giant lizard is Galotia stellini. And at first, when you think about it, the canaries, yeah, that makes sense. But it says Grand Canaria. So this is um, a little bit worrisome. So look at that. Endemic to the island of Grand Canaria in the, Gran in the Canary Islands. Grand Canaria. But wait, isn't that Atlantica? No, it is Stellini. Stellini is in Canaria. So what that means is I have to go from the mainland to Canaria and then Canaria back to Lanzarote and Fort Aventura, and then over to Tenerife. So it's all messed up now. But my DNA evidence is still the same. It doesn't matter where the animals are. What matters is who the animals are. And so my DNA evidence still tells me the same picture, but now it's just going to look different on a map. So it turns out if you look at the currents, a couple times a year the currents shift around the Canaries, but there's a strong current that pushes from the north. And so as we think about ocean currents, it probably means that these animals would have had to come from Europe, from Spain perhaps, and down this way. And then they would first end up here. And then when the seasons change, the currents are favorable that they could potentially drift this way and then this way. So if you look at the DNA evidence, the smallest number of base pairs between Stellini and Atlantica is still 36, but instead of going this way to this way, because of Filson's mistake, we have to switch it, and now we go from Stellini to Atlantica this way. 
Well, if that's true, then this is no longer Atlantica, so we can't go this way. Atlantica is now over here. Atlantica is going to have to go this way to get to Tenerife. So we can, we can then assume that Galosha Atlantica, just 19 base pairs difference from the lizards on South Tenerife Island, made a long journey when the currents were right. These animals are riding on kelp, drifting across the ocean. So we start here. There's 36 base pair differences, then just 19 base pair differences. These lighter colored ones are the other calculated base pair differences. When we built our table, recall that there are actually 21 different choices. All 21 of those choices are located here. But I've colored in blue the smallest numbers to give me the best parsimonious or simple answer as to how this worked. So the smallest number of base pairs between Atlantica and South Tenerife is 19. There's only six base pair differences between North and South Tenerife, so we go from South to North. There's only eight base pair differences between La Palma and North Tenerife. There's only 15 base pair differences between South Tenerife and Gomera. And lastly, there's only four base pair differences between Gomera and Hero. So the blue shows the most likely path of species divergence and evolution uh, to the modern species on the Canary Islands. Interestingly enough, if you look at Galosha stellini, it has none of the blue. This lizard and all the research that I can find, now granted I can't go to the Canary Islands, but everything I'm seeing makes this lizard the drab desert lizard, the giant uh, uh, lizard of the Canaries. And then everything else has some blue on it when you do the research. Some of the blue is very vibrant. But these lizards here all seem to have um, originated from Atlantica. So this makes a lot of sense that you're seeing this is our blue. That's why I chose blue for this color. Um, we're, we're seeing that blue as another morphological trait. So we have the DNA, we have the morphology, we have the geographic age, and the geographic distance to some extent all supporting this theory the only exception being that the geographic distance fooled us in the beginning. And if you f follow the actual course of who Stellini is and who Atlantica is, then add in the ocean currents, it still kind of makes sense. But from Atlantica on, the DNA is in alignment, the geographic age is in alignment, and then to some extent the geographic distance is in alignment, and all of the morphology works. I also think it's interesting when you look over here that this is a fairly large lizard coming from North Tenerife two million years ago, and that this is a fairly small lizard coming from South Tenerife four to five million years ago, and that this is a more recent divergence from this one. And these two are very, very similar, only four base pairs difference, so basically the same lizard. But we had about four million years on this little island to shrink our lizards down through island endemic dwarfism, and that this lizard here, whereas one logical human brain way of going about it is we go from big to medium to small, and the yeah, other's 19 base pair differences each for that idea, there's a simpler explanation, which is we got here and got small and went here while we were small. And over here, we were large, got over here, and uh, over 2 million years started the island endemic dwarfism process. So there's a lot of cool stuff to think about biologically here. This is the Filson phylogeny lab redone. It's redone with consideration to who Galosha Stellini truly is and how we can layer up all this evidence to come to some kind of conclusion. Now, if we get more evidence and that changes some of how we perceive this, then, of course, we have to layer that evidence in and revise our hypotheses again. That's science, scientific process. The Canary Islands are kind of a natural laboratory of a sort, similar to the Galapagos Islands. Archipelagos of islands that have come from volcanic eruptions, where the islands are of different ages and with different histories, often are perfect places to study evolution. Biological evolution is driven by life processes. Every time two animals reproduce sexually, they recombine genes and change the gene pool. So evolution, as defined by changes in gene frequencies, occur readily through just sexual reproduction. Those island chains also create isolation. And so every time an animal group arrives on an island, 
they begin to experience a different genetic destiny than their ancestors. And so you get what's called divergent evolution, where different populations move in diverging directions genetically and in response to natural selection, the ecological conditions on each island. Because of this, over time, each island has a evolved population. Each island has a population of individuals that come from a particular ancestor. They're recognizable as such, but we can study how they're different from their ancestors, a living evolutionary laboratory.